It's zucchini season, and if you don't grow it, your friend might, and if they don't, someone you know is gonna have an abundance of this, if nothing else, at the grocery store. And let me tell you, these zucchini fritters with a quick pesto aioli to put on top are the way to go. They're nostalgic, they're delicious, but guess what? They're really quick, and you're gonna love them. So let's put some together so you can see how easy they are and make them too. A zucchini fritter is really simple. It doesn't have a ton of things that go into it, and that's why it can be made anytime. Now, these are things that my grandma always made, and at first it sounds gross. When you're a kid, you're like, zucchini? No, thank you. But then after it's fried, and after it's a little pancake, the world all makes sense. And a zucchini fritter is totally something we started asking grandma to make. She also made these really good leftover mashed potato pancakes. So good. But these are a close second and they're one of my favorites. So we're gonna start with zucchini. Now, zucchini comes in all sizes. You can go really small, which is what I usually like to use. You can get this one's more of a medium. And then sometimes, if you're growing it, you're gonna get a big boat. It's like a Cadillac. It's massive. And those you definitely wanna cut in half and take the seeds out of, which I'll even do on this one too, just to show you. The reason you do that is a lot of the pithy water content can sit in those seeds in the middle. So even on these, see how all of that seediness, which would hardly be there on a small one, I like to take this out because I think it adds just one, a lot of water, and it just kind of takes a lot of the flavor out. Now zucchini, you're gonna say, well, it doesn't have a lot of flavor. It doesn't, you're right, on its own it doesn't, but this is just kind of this like wet, mushy middle that you don't want. So that's why we actually just go in and when you do this, you take out all that. You don't need to squeeze this or anything. We're just gonna shred it. So I'm gonna take a small shredder. I'm just gonna start shredding it. Now you're noticing I washed it, but I did not peel it. Why? I don't like to hide what's going into something I'm eating. I like the peel. For one, I think it's extra fiber and nutrients, but also I like the look of it. So I'm gonna shred this until I get what I need and then we can just put together the fritter. I'm finished shredding this. Now you can use a big box grater. You could even use a food processor with that shredding attachment blade if you want to. Whatever makes you feel comfortable. But that's really all it is and all the simplicity that is needed here. You know, zucchini can be a chameleon. There are people that make relish out of zucchini, like a pickle relish. You can make pickles out of zucchini. You can also just make really good baked goods. But this is just a really fun way to use it and kind of make it into a meal or at least a side component of a meal. So first what we're gonna do is take a couple eggs. I like to put them in here first because I really wanna make sure I get them beat up because once you put everything else in, it can be hard to beat them. So I'm gonna take my little whisk and just beat them until they're combined. This will just make it easier then. And once they're combined, which doesn't take long at all, we're gonna add the zucchini. You know, I have such memories of making them and food is a memory. We love to, you know, just kind of put together the best moments that we had with food and remember them. And that nostalgia can sometimes dictate what something is. And so for me, these are that major food memory that we would make lots of zucchini cake. We would make zucchini bread. But when we made these, it was like my favorite time in the garden year when we could use those. So to this now, I also wanna have a little bit of oomph, so we're gonna add some scallion. Now the reason I'm using some scallion or green onion instead of just onion is the astringency of onion can be a little much. So instead, I like how these scallions have a little bit of a lighter, sweeter flavor. Think almost like a scallion pancake, but not. It's that same idea. So what I'm doing is just giving them a nice chop. You can see I even cut them once down the middle just to make sure they started getting a little bit better size. And I'm getting a little bit of the greens because I think the greens can add kind of some nice color. And if you want to, you can run your knife through it a few times to get them fine. But I don't mind seeing them. Again, I don't think food should ever be hidden or ingredients, vegetables. I don't like the idea of hiding them within food. I want people to see what they're eating so they can taste what they're eating because we first see it with our eyes, then we taste it. So now that that's in there, we can start adding the other components. So we really wanna make sure this has good flavor. So we're gonna do some black pepper, pretty simple. We're gonna do some garlic powder and I'm doing garlic form because again, the astringency of fresh garlic can be a little much for these. So I want it to just be a nice light garlic flavor and that's what the powder will do. We definitely need some salt. That's like a must because that zucchini just soaks up that salt. And now we're gonna mix this all together before we add the really dry ingredients that are gonna maybe more make it tight. So I'm just gonna take this and start whisking all this together. And it doesn't take long to whisk that together. Obviously, zucchini has a lot of moisture in it and we're gonna counteract that with just simplicity here, some flour. 
And then of course, some Parmesan cheese, which I roughly grated in my food processor. So you can do a fine grade if you want to too. But what this is going to do is add a lot of flavor, but also act as another binder. So you have both that flour and the cheese binding it together. And that to me is one of my favorite parts. So already I'm smelling that Parmesan cheese. That to me is the kicker. And then you get that flour that's starting to, see what we're getting now? We're getting like a pancake batter and that's exactly what you want. So I'm gonna just finish stirring this up, get some oil heating and we can start making these. And you can see it makes a nice thick batter and guess what? You're gonna see me in a real moment here in the kitchen. What did I forget? I kept a lid on my baking powder. So I forgot the baking powder. <laughs> Usually add this with the flour with thin dry ingredients. We're gonna put it in now and guess what? You're gonna see how mistakes can still work out. So I'm gonna mix that in, which is pretty simple and quick. And this is what you want. You want a nice tight batter because what actually happens is some of that zucchini, which has a lot of water content, comes out into it and makes it just perfect. So I have some oil that I've been heating. So I thought we could go over. I'm gonna put the oil back on because it got a little warm. And we're just gonna start making these. That's how simple this is. Now, grandma would do it in an electric skillet. She'd get out her electric skillet, put it on the counter. We're gonna do it in just a skillet with some oil. And I have it heating because that to me is the, always the easiest way to get it to go. And do you hear that sizzle? So once you put them down in, you just wanna press them out lightly into just a rough pancake shape. Now. This is not a perfect pancake shape, no, no. This is just like a fritter, irregular, imperfect shape. And that's what you want. So once you put them in, you can even, if you want, make your rounds and then just use your spatula to slightly press them down. And we're just gonna cook them till they're golden brown on each side, which will finish cooking the centers too. And we'll be taking them off until they're all done. So I'm just ready now to flip the last one here and I want to show you. You want to cook them until they're just nice and golden brown on one side, flip them over. That one didn't get quite as dark as it should have, so we'll probably flip it back. But you can see when you flip them, see how nicely they just flip over? That's why you have that oil in there. I've been trying to regulate that temperature. You want to make sure it's, you know, at that medium level, which takes a little bit, but make sure you heat. If you're using like I am, a stainless steel pan, one question I always get is, how do things not stick to it? Whether you're doing eggs, a protein, fritters, it's making sure you preheat the pan with whatever oil you're using. So I'm just using a neutral oil, meaning an oil that doesn't have flavor. And I wanted to make sure I heated that oil in the pan beforehand and got it hot before I started cooking these. If you put it in at the wrong temperature, like if it's too cold, they wanna stick a lot more. Also, just like on a protein, I don't wanna flip them until I notice they want to release from that bottom of the pan. That to me is super important. So what I'm doing with this last batch you can see is just making sure they get a nice color, which they're not quite there yet. So what I wanna show you is what we have, I've been putting a rack and then I have them on top. So you can put these right into like a 200 degree oven Fahrenheit and let them just stay warm until they're all done, just like you would a pancake. So now when these are all finished, we'll just quick make a sauce. And we'll be ready to eat. These are all finished and you can see they're beautiful. They're brown, they're crispy on top, that's what you want, on both sides actually, not just on top. And this is, okay, so when I was little, we would have this with ketchup. And that's probably how grandma got us first to eat them, but, and you would douse on the ketchup or dip it in the ketchup. Still love it that way, but to elevate it, I really kind of moved towards more of a, yeah, basil pesto aioli, which is one of my favorites. So what we're gonna do is take mayonnaise. Now I make homemade mayonnaise, you can see my recipe on my website, or just use your favorite one. And then to that, I'm using Again, a homemade pesto. I freeze my pesto, and so I have it all year long, even though it is pesto season again. So I'm gonna mix these two together, and you can use any type of pesto you like, and look how beautiful this is gonna look. You just wanna stir it together. Now, depending on your pesto, depending on your mayonnaise, always taste it just to make sure the seasonings are right. This is also really good, by the way, to use. It's getting to close to BLT season. Use this on your BLTs. It just, it steps it up a level. I just wanna taste a little bit. Mm, that's good. And a little bit of salt, just to make sure. And then it's all ready to go. So now we have one of my favorite side dishes, or to me really it's perfect to have a lunch. You could even have a side salad with it and serve this with your salad, however you like it. And then you wanna put that pesto right on top. I mean, believe me, you could even, you know what? I have some fresh basil right here. You could put some basil with it too, since we're doing that with the pesto, you can kind of just toss on some beautiful shards of basil. There's no reason not to. And you know, I do have those tops of the scallions, those green onions. You can chop those up if you want and just kind of put a few of those on. Obviously you don't need to go to that much work, but you deserve the work. Even if it's just you you're cooking for, you always deserve the extra step to make it look good, 
because you know it's gonna taste good. So you better take that extra step and make it look beautiful too. Mm. It's good. It is what it is. It's delicious. It is a zucchini fritter and it has that delicious pesto mayo on top, which is so good. And I love the crispiness of it and I love the food memory it brings right away. You know, you don't need to find ways necessarily to use up ingredients, but if you happen to have zucchini and you've made your cakes, you've made your breads, and you just want something that's just homey and nostalgic and good, you make a zucchini fritter, you enjoy it, you can use them, you can reheat these the next day, just crisp them in the oven a little bit or on a skillet again, just until they get crispy. You won't be sorry you made them. So what do I hope you do with this? I hope you make zucchini fritters because it's easy and it's delicious. What I also hope you do is share this video around because when you share these videos, of course it helps me, but it helps others see that good food is easy to make at home, is doable. If I can do it, anybody can do it. And that's what I always hope you see. So as always, check my website, wiseguy.com for this recipe where you can print it off and all my other recipes. Until next time, who knew you're gonna find another way to make zucchini worthwhile? This is it.